Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our webinar. My name is Alisa Khromoychuk, and I'm the director of the Ukrainian Institute London, which is a center for Ukraine-related educational and cultural activities. Um, so Ukrainian Institute London is a registered charity, and we work to broaden knowledge about Ukraine in the UK and beyond by offering discussions and projects that explore Ukrainian history, culture, and current affairs. Uh, just before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that our webinar will last 90 minutes. Uh, we'll hear some readings of poetry in Ukrainian and in English from this excellent volume, which, which will be introduced um, soon, in a minute. And then we'll also have a general discussion. So please have your questions questions posted in the Q&A uh, function on Zoom throughout um, the webinar. Um, and it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, our moderator for tonight's webinar. It's Vitaly Chernetsky, who is professor in the Department of Slavic and Eurasian Languages and Literatures at the University of Kansas. His research focuses on modern and contemporary cultures, literature, film, popular culture of Russia, Ukraine, Central and Eastern, and Eastern Europe, and Central Asia. Um, and um, uh, he um, is a, an author of the book called Mapping Post-Communist Cultures, Russia and Ukraine in the Context of Globalization, also um, of five edited and co-edited volumes and numerous articles and reviews. Um, he published translations of Ukrainian and Russian into English, include, and uh, they include two novels and numerous shorter literary works, as well as scholarly articles and historical documents. Uh, Vitaly has served on multiple prize juries um, and expert review panels, and is on the editor, editorial and advisory boards of several journals. He is also the editor of the Ukrainian Studies book series of um, Academic Studies Press. Um, we're very happy to have you here, Vitaly. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Olesa. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. It's wonderful to be with you today, especially to celebrate, to continue the celebration of this uh, wonderful uh, volume that came out um, late last year. Um, this is a book that I'm very happy that it came out in the Ukrainian Studies series at Academic Studies Press, which is a wonderful publisher based in Boston uh, that specializes primarily in books in uh, Slavic and East European literature, culture, and history, and in uh, Jewish studies, so Jewish uh, culture, literature, and history both in Eastern Europe and uh, in the Mediterranean region. Um, shortly after the Revolution of Dignity, uh, the press reached out to me um, saying that they really wanted to start a Ukrainian studies series. And I was very happy that they in fact did that. The series has been progressing robustly. Uh, the first book came out in 2016, and we have several others in the pipeline. And it has included many uh, different books, including uh, two literary anthologies, uh, especially very importantly, uh, I think, uh, Words for War, New Writing from Ukraine, a uh, project in which Olesia has actually participated. And uh, so, uh, the one of the major lacuna in terms of what the English language readership can acquaint itself with is actually the earlier periods of Ukrainian literature. More recently, there has been a plethora of translations of uh, contemporary writers, but in terms of important Ukrainian uh, literary texts, uh, of the earlier periods, there is still a lot of gaps uh, that need to be filled. And this is especially true of modernist and avant-garde literature of the 1920s, 1930s, uh, because uh, this is also literature that was largely suppressed and uh, denied access to uh, during the later periods of Soviet rule and was only begun to be truly uncovered and appreciated in its home country uh, beginning in perestroika years and of course during the post-Soviet period of independence 
during this time, there was uh, there were many efforts in the global Ukrainian diaspora to spotlight this uh, great writing, but it too was uh, reaching limited audiences. So this is really wonderful, and I'm very happy and proud that uh, books in this uh, series, including this volume, have contributed to greater appreciation and understanding of uh, the role of uh, wonderful works of uh, Ukrainian literature and culture. I will share screen now uh, for a couple of minutes and show you the page on the press's website where you can find information about the book, which is available in both uh, paperback and hardcover uh, right now. So this is the page for our book, as you can see on the publisher side, which is academicstudiespress.com. And if you then navigate to serious Ukrainian studies, you will find all the books in uh, the series. So uh, the project began uh, through my uh, friendship and collaboration uh, with one of the co-editors, in the volume, Ale Friedman, who uh, became very strongly interested in uh, Mykola Bajan, and especially in sharing uh, the poet's uh, contribution to understanding uh, his uh, role uh, to, of, in uh, spreading the word and getting the world to know about the tragedy of uh, Bab and Yar, or Babi Yar in Russian, uh, one of the uh, most important sites of the tragedy of the Holocaust, the Holocaust by bullets uh, in uh, the uh, on the Eastern Front of World War II. Uh, Bajan wrote a very moving and very powerful poem upon visiting the site soon after the Soviet troops uh, retook. Kiev uh, from the Nazis, and he was able to uh, return and see the site with his own eyes. And uh, from uh, that uh, collaboration and th this uh, translation and other works of Bajan, uh, to whom uh, Jewish topics were very, very important uh, since the days of his childhood, he grew up in Uman, in a city with a very strong, historically important Jewish community. That's where his childhood and early youth was spent. Um, Lev um, found the other collaborators, the other ed uh, co-editors of this volume, uh, Oksana Rosenblum and Angelika Hezhnya, and together they uh, came up with an idea of showcasing early influential work of uh, Bajan as a great avant-garde uh, early modernist writer, a writer who deserves uh, to have much greater uh, appreciation around the world. And so uh, without further ado, I will uh, pass the floor now to the co-editors. I believe uh, Lev will speak first. Uh, so. Uh, Lev, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We sometimes wish not to be alive during interesting times, but here we are. And thank you for having us, Alessia, and the Ukrainian Institute London for hosting the seance. Thank you, Vitaly. Um, you said some things that I was going to say, which leaves me more time for puns and mentions of uh, thanks to the national men's soccer teams for giving us some context. For anyone that is watching soccer right now, it is okay. Football is also important. So this is the first time our little orchestra has crossed the pond, even though individual members are scattered across the globe. And we're grateful to be here. Bajan's work read again, rendered again for the first time, one step closer to his native soil. I'm going to tell you how we got here. So this is ultimately a case of momentum deferred, creative energy that true to its nature could not be destroyed, just displaced. Something like thunder inevitably arriving after lightning that birthed it. The sounds you will hear today and the text you will see are the products of sparks of inspiration and exercises of both experimentation and of freedom. 
Pure Freedom, that took place almost 100 years ago. I stand by the conceit that this book was inevitable, both because it came to be and because I could not avoid it, that this book is necessary, that it exists and it exists behind me and in my hands and in the ether and on the web and hopefully for a very long time that it is done because each participant and the community, and it is a community, which supported them, the size of which I have difficulty comprehending, believe that Mikola Bajan deserved more recognition, that we as a global community of stations, what have you, readers, writers, students, that we could do better by Mikola Bajan's work, by the possibilities of his work, what had not been done up until now. So I was born in Moscow. I did not grow up with Ukrainian, nor was it ever taught to me. Branches of my family were Ukrainian Jews. We remained Jews for a very long time. But my generation was robbed of that language and many other things by forces that Vitaly mentioned, forces we know all too well. So the first time I really encountered Ukrainian was with the discovery of Bajan's poem about Babiyar, which to my disdain was also a discovery for many people who did speak the language since childhood and for many people whose families perished there for, for people period. People did not know this, this, this work, this act, because it was a work act. Just as children have speech acts, this was an act and a work. This work was little known in Ukrainian, nearly virtually unknown in the West, and I simply couldn't abide it. And this took years, this, this little poem took years. But in the end, I was able to assemble this community and this team of translators that helped me to return this work to the light in the West and in Ukraine. And this book is dedicated to much earlier material produced by a much younger, different Bajan, even with a, with a pen name. But the effort that produced this book was rooted in the same thing, the potentiality born of the discovery of beauty, both of writing and the human that produced it turned to kinetic energy by the drive to share it. So a little over a year ago, rather a little over a year after, I thought I had fulfilled my duty to Bajan's memory. Yet I was approached by Oksana with yet another poem. So we go from poem this big to a poem this big called Razumova Serdiets, Heart to Heart Conversation. Again, a Bajan and a Ukrainian, which was bewildering to me and to Ukrainians. And she said, I want more for this, more for him. He deserves more. So I complied, not surprisingly, in our naive hope of finding texts which we hoped could be found and then getting them translated in the conviction that it, has to, that it had to be done because it was not done had it been done, we wouldn't have to do it. That's why, that's why we're here. We were able to, again, mobilize the troops. We probably thought that we were long done with them. They know better now. To reactivate the network of scholars, librarians, institutions, friends, a web which was not bound by time zones, borders, languages, not bound by anything. We'd like to thank it in Zimbal at the Institute of Literature Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. We're grateful for our collaboration with Taisa Sidarachuk of the Emilian Pritsak Memorial Library, the National University of Kiev Mohyla Academy, the staff at the Vernetsky National Library, the Department of Periodicals, and the Mikola Bajan Museum in Kiev for their ongoing support. Olha Alex is at the Ukrainian Collection of Harvard and James Kamenkovsky. Elizabeth Defoe Library, University of Manitoba, and many, many other institutions and everyone that said we will try when we said please and then we said thank you so we have messages flying back and forth at all hours a friend in budapest asking another friend in Kharkiv to search for a text an essay being written between germany and the czech republic questions posed to the cloud about obscure turns of phrase and puns and metaphors with fascinating discussions emerging all catalyzed by texts which have proved timeless our co-editor angelica was our guiding light in the deep dives picking through the signifiers, splitting, and then gluing back the hairs, forging a language of language in the process with each of our writers and translators. Waves of confusion and resolution, entropy, chains of contact, life and global events continuing in the meantime, this work survived and thrived 
I'm holding it in my hand. I've said this actually several times in disbelief still. And I shall. It has been a long time coming, waiting patiently, aging gracefully. So let's take a moment today to admire and receive the young Mikola Bajan in London. And here we are. Thank you, everybody. I will now pass the mic to Oksana Rosenblum, my better half of this book, better third, my co-editor. Thank you so much, Lev, for such a moving, um, moving piece. And um, um, thank you, Olesi, for hosting this event. It's, it's a great pleasure and honor. And um, I would like to say a few words about how I became part of this project. Uh, for me, this project started with a chance encounter, really. Um, I came across, as Lev mentioned, Bajan's long poem, Heart to Heart Conversation from 1928, when browsing online. And I didn't know at that point too much about Bajan's early poetry. I was really struck by the uh, imaginative power of this poem, which narrates a dreamlike journey of the lyrical hero through Kyiv of the 1920s with detours into the Russian empire of the 19th century. And all throughout the poem, uh, especially one symbol of a heart uh, really resonated with me. Uh, there was something about this symbol that, ca that kept appearing in the poem that deeply touched me. Um, we know that in the late 20s, Bajan uh, was harshly criticized for being a tr fellow traveler. And yet his, uh, his fate was about to take a major turn. Um, and um, while a lot of his fellow poets perished in the 1930s, he not only survived, but he became an important party functionary. So I decided I wanted to discover more about Bajan's early work. In retrospect, I'm very happy that I did that. I'm so grateful that I had a chance to work with Lev and Angelica, my endlessly creative, patient, and dedicated co-editors. Um, Lev was really um, an energy spark uh, behind this project, uh, coming up with different ideas. And um, we, we had to adapt a lot to the changing circumstances. And they were always changing because a massive project like, like this one relies for the most part on the trust in people's understanding that this work is important, that it has never been done quite quite like that on that scale before and it needs to be done. Um, Angelica was our true magus of the Ukrainian language, uh, plowing through the original poems and working with translators one-on-one -on -one and clarifying the flood of questions and puzzles that arise during the translation process. And my role was as a, as a compiling editor of this book and um, as a sort of overall manager of the project was to envision, first of all, what this book will be from the poetry that will go into it, the choices that we had to make um, to the people who would uh, write the introduction and the afterward to the cover page and the list of illustrations. And having never worked on such a large project before, I was at times left uh, breathless with the sheer amount of emails to write and respond and the text to edit and, um, um, and so on. However, I, I always reminded myself that what I'm doing is just a balancing act, not unlike what uh, Bajan writes in one of his uh, beautiful futuristic poems, um, Circus, just a trick, just a flip. So it seems that at times all of us were um, doing those tricks and pulling the proverbial rabbits out of hats and making sure that the work goes on. 
So um, as an editor of this book, I wanted to include the most representative examples of Bajan's early poetry, regardless of how we modern readers might feel about this poet's literary journey. Uh, I'm sure that the his futurist poetry that you'll hear today in the original and in the translation will attract um, your attention. But at the same time, I hope that um, you will also be interested in the poems from, from his 1926 collection, The Seventeenth Patrol, which are dedicated to the revolutionary years, or his long phantasmagoric masterpiece, uh, Hoffman's Night, or the epic tour de force, The Blind Bards, uh, which was written when, written when Bajan was only 27. Um, also another aspect of this, uh, of the book and of this project is that a lot of his, of Bajan's early poems um, were, were scattered between um, the journals and periodicals of 19, periodicals of the 1920s. So they appear in this volume um, for the first time and locating some of them was really quite a uh, quite an endeavor. For example, it took well, it took us quite a while to get hold of his uh, collection, Rizblanatin, the sculpted shadow. Uh, and I I hope that this meticulous work of gathering the sources uh, shows how much still needs to be done, um, not only to unearth the, the poetry. Um, of the 1920s and 30s, but also to create the necessary critical apparatus to work with it and still how much needs to be translated. So I really see this um, as a beginning of, of some other bigger projects. So just to conclude, I would like to thank um, a few people who were really instrumental for this project thank you to Marco Andrichik and Emilia Glazer who were among the early supporters of the book and shared their time and expertise. Um, also to our translators who wore different hats during the project, Ostap Kin, Svetlana Lavochkina, Miroslav Shkandri. Thank you to Vitaly Chernetsky and Ken Katie Anduganova from Academic Studies Press for many hours dedicated to the publication of this book. Thank you to Misha Bilecki, who designed the cover uh, um, and was really very patient with the ideas uh, for this book. So these are just, yeah, as Lev mentioned, a few people um, who participated in the project. Thank you so much again. And um, I think that we are ready now to move uh, to Alina. Bavag, and it's um, really a pleasure to introduce her. Uh, Helena um, wrote an introduction to our book and spent um, an enormous amount of time uh, on um, really putting together uh, all the um, essential information that needs to go into volume like that about Bajan's life and, and his work and putting it into not only Ukrainian, but European context. So, Alina, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Oksana. Hello to everybody. And first, I uh, wanted to thank to Oksana, Lev and Angelica for um, inviting me to such great project. I'm very happy that, uh, as for now, we have uh, a book of uh, Bajan's uh, translations. I think it's just the first, uh, not the last. So as Oksana emphasized, uh, I hope it to be continued. And I wanted to thank to uh, ev everybody who supported this project and who helped uh, to work on the translations and introduction. Uh, in my uh, brief presentation, um, I decided to, to talk about his uh, um, his main uh, points of development as a poet. Um, and probably I should start that um, I started to study Bajan and my love story with Bajan uh, 
uh, started uh, 10 or even more than 10 years ago uh, in Kharkiv. And uh, at that time, it was almost unexplored uh, poet. Um, now situation has changed. Uh, but still, Bajan is uh, one of the most stylistically controversial and uh, diverse poets of the 1920s, uh, uh, 1930s. Uh, he was uh, engaged uh, with different literary groups of the 1920s. He survived the purchase of the 1930s. Uh, he made a successful career as a poet and cultural and political figure in Soviet Ukraine and put a lot of efforts to rehabilitate names of the executed writers of the 1920s during uh, Khrushchev though. Uh, so, early Bajan is the author of three poetry collections and separate poems written in the late 1920s and early 1930s. Uh, his early period shows his development from avant-garde to metaphysical and philosophical poetry. And his poems of the late 1920s indicates uh, a pure modernist strategy, the desire to create a difficult and sophisticated language that gives the new vision of the thing. Um, before I start to talk about his uh, first book, The 17th Special, 1926, uh, I wanted to emphasize an interesting detail that actually his first book, uh, handwritten, but that never had been published uh, during his life as a separate uh, collection, uh, was con Contrast of the Mood, Contrast in Astroium and it was dedicated to his mother. Uh, it indicates um, romanticism and uh, symbolism aesthetics. And I would like to quote just, just, uh, just for you, just to, uh, to compare later when, uh, when uh, our authors uh, um, will read his, his other poems. Uh, I will read in, uh, in Ukrainian and I will ask uh, Bogdan uh, to read his translation. Якби я був тим орлом жвавим, то я б літав в бої криваві, то добував собі б я слави в лихій забаві. Але я крил орла не маю, і на бої я не літаю, як раб пригнічений конаю, в життю вмираю. Um, and the translation is, if I were a nimble eagle, I would fly into bloody battles. I would try to earn some glory in this cruel game, but I don't have the wings of an eagle. And so I don't fly into battles. I just wither like a downtrodden slave dying in this life. Many thanks to Bogdan. Um, actually, Bajan was 13 years old uh, during the October 1917 revolution. Uh, this uh, partly explains the romantic perception of the events in his first poetry collection, The 17th Petrol, uh, the 17th Petrol, uh, published of, of, under uh, the name Nick Bajan. In 1921, um, Bajan set out from Uman to Kyiv. And already that same year, he joined the Association of Pan Futurists as Pan Food, initiated uh, that same year by its leader, Mikhail Semenko. Uh, as Bajan later explained in his memoir, here I would like to quote, by the time I moved to Kyiv, I had already become a full-scale leftist. And, I, and so I didn't join the neoclassics, but instead went to meet up with Mikhail Semenko. Semenko persuaded me and Yuri Yanovsky to move to Kharkiv. He discovered us, uh, us all. He supported us and helped us to get settled. Uh, Bajan, Bajan's other mentor uh, who had a great influence on him, it was an avant-garde director, Les Kurbas, uh, the leader of Brazil uh, Theater. Uh, here I would like to quote, uh, when Kurbas came to Uman with his theater, I read him uh, teaching us like harps, like harps. He was stunned. Tichina and I, of course, uh, Mayakovsky, uh, these were my first teachers. When I moved to Kyiv, I used to visit Kurbas quite often and I followed Berezil theater all the time. I really felt the influence of expressionism, though the place of Berezil. Uh, his first poetry collection included uh, 24 poems uh, written during uh, the years he spent in Kyiv, and I wanted to emphasize that it was published in 1926. Uh, these poems are clearly a futurist and uh, 
uh, Bajan plays with formal and semantic aspects of world creation, uh, capitalizes on uh, shades of meaning and searches for new uh, techniques to show dynamism. Uh, as an example, it could be the poem, uh, The Trooper's Song, um, uh, where the author reflects uh, uh, the perception uh, of uh, the uh, revolutionary years. In 1925, uh, Semenko's Panfuturists settled in Kharkiv, and uh, uh, Bajan um, uh, himself found in the epicenter of Ukrainian cultural and artistic life. Um, um, Kharkiv at that, of the time was the capital of Ukraine. Um, um, 1925 is an all, also very important year because the uh, literary discussion started. It was in, initiated by uh, Mikola Khvilevi. Uh, even though uh, Bajan didn't take part in the uh, discussion itself, um, the e echoes of literary discussion are evident in Bajan's uh, poem, poems from that period. Uh, for example, the blood of the captive maidens, the road, an autumn road, a hut-to-hut uh, -hut conversation, the Hoffman's Night. Uh, for example, his poem, The Blood of the Captive Maidens, is a poetic transformation of Hvilevi's concept of an Asian Renaissance. Uh, Hvilevi claims spiritual rebirth for then backward Asian countries. It is Soviet Ukraine that Hvilevi places at the starting point of the Asian Renaissance. And correspondingly, Bajan's poem uh, depicts the rape and the impregnation of the fair Ukrainian captive uh, woman by the Mongol conqueror. Uh, Bajan's second poetry collection, The Sculptured Shadows, uh, which uh, appeared a year later, already in 1927, testifies to a new uh, period. It's uncertainly a hesitation and a minor elegiac mood uh, stand in sharp contrast to the sublime intonations of the early heroic ballads and songs. And uh, also I would like to emphasize that this uh, uh, change uh, has happened within a year. Uh, such sonnets as uh, Fern, uh, Lavash and Love Potion uh, shows the modernist desire to reconstruct lost truths by turning to Ukrainian national tradition, folklore, and uh, Slavic legends. Uh, Bajan employs traditional plot as pretext for modernist uh, concretization and formal creativity. Uh, symbolic and romantic paradigms also make themselves felt in the uh, cycle composed of autumn paths and the road that draw on the motif of the journey of life. Uh, for example, the poem Autumn Pass uh, surprises by projecting the feeling of alienation onto post-revolutionary reality. Uh, however, at the end of uh, the poem, uh, the speaker tries to throw away dot uh, and disappointment in the name of the communist ideal, because here I quote, there are no words of disbelief on the flag of the commune, the end of quote. Uh, the late 1920s saw Bajan at a breaking point. Uh, the author tries to harmonize the universal values with ideological requirements of the new regime. Uh, hence, dualism and uncertainty haunt the poems of that period. Uh, in this period, in the late 1920s, appeared his masterpieces, uh, Hot to Hot Conversation, 1928, Edifices, 1929, Hoffman's Night, that same year, and Getter in Uman. Bajan achieves new complexity in structure, semantics, and rhythm. Uh, despite interest in classical forms, the poet works with avant-garde techniques, uh, and employed different strategies such as grotesquery, metaphorical complexity, and objectif objectification. Um, also, uh, this period indicates the coexistence of uh, different uh, stylistics. For example, at the same time, he creates futurist poems. Uh, as an example, could be uh, the poem Foxtrot. Uh, 
the triptych edifices, uh, which gave the title to his third poetry collection, uh, published in 1929, describes three architectural structures characteristic of three epochs, the Middle Ages, the Cossack Hetmanate, and the Soviet era. The poem interprets national history, history lyrically with metaphors that symbolize the um, perspective epochs contrasting the past with modernity. Uh, and on the, of the precise interest is the uh, last part of this poem, uh, buildings, budinok, building, budinok, um, is one of the most expressive um, where Bajan finds delight in the music and rhythm of the focused work of free communist people. Uh, together with Edifices, the, the poem Heart to Heart Conversation 1928 constitutes another of the central text allegories of the book. It's backward in the social and political atmosphere of the late 1920s uh, in Soviet Ukraine and as I have already emphasized, uh, the reader overhears echoes of the literary discussion of 1925-1928 and of an anticipation of new political changes. Um, the Ukrainization policy and new, new economic policy was, were abolished in 1928. Um, all in all, the poems of the late 1920s indicates Bajan's attempt to create and develop a new language to talk about the modernity, a new language which could help to invent the new literary tradition deeply rooted in the national context, but that could be universal or appeal to the universalist categories at the same time. And here, um, as an example, could be named his unfinished poem, Blind Bards. Uh, this put uh, him fully in step with the great European and American modernist poets of the late 1920s and 1930s, such as Yeats, Eliot, and Pound. Um, Bajan's early poetry ends with an ode to Joseph Stalin, A Man Stands in the Star Bearing Kremlin, published in 1922. Uh, 1932. Uh, Bajan adopts socialist realism necessary at the time for those who wish to continue uh, to survive and publish. Um, here probably I should stop, uh, but I want to emphasize, uh, as, as I did in the beginning, that his uh, next socialist realism uh, period uh, is uh, a very interesting phenomenon verse to be discussed and uh, to be uh, translated and probably to be uh, published. So uh, I hope that uh, this is only the beginning. So thanks a lot. Uh, thank you once more. Thank you so much, Alina, for this very um, detailed and rich introduction to Mikola Bajan's work, early work. And um, now we are moving to the reading part. Um, and I would like to invite Angelica and Sean to read um, one of my favorite Bajan's early poems. Hello, everybody. So let's start with my favorite, the oldest one. Mene zelenech nich til tjul. Люля хміль, о, хто зазирає ввечері на зорі хвиль сльот на той. Мах, гам, втом, гілля хили чоло, лягай, гаї, лагун, накилим, легінь, лом. Около, локон лих, у голих ніг імхів твоїх. На келих хилить літо то, а плахту. Не конопель стон, жах тух, тінь тух. Коло леса облетне тло навкруг, плахта там. Thank you.
The hops of green legs lull me, of bodies, tool. Oh, one who eyes in the evening the shimmering shingles of waves. Magus of the gamut and languor, bow your branches. Lie on the kilim, lad of longing, groves of the lagoons. Oh, circle, locks of sorrows, there you are on bare legs, on bare mosses. It's not the goblet that summer tilts, but the skirt. It's not the moans in the hemp's. There's horror of yearnings, shade of yearnings. A ground coiling around a circle of pools. There, a skirt. Thank you so much, Sean and Angelica for the beautiful reading. And uh, now um, we're gonna hear Bogdan. Uh, who was supposed to read with Amelia Glazer, but unfortunately she could not be here. Yes. So hold down, please. Yes. Well, I'm I'm uh, happy for her not being here because I think she's resting with her family, which we <laughs> all are uh, in a, in a good way envious of her. So I'll I'll try to to um, fill her in her shoes as well. So I'll um uh, I'll start with the Ukrainian uh, original and then. Uh, read the translation. So, дорога не сходима. Нехай слова мої жмаковані і куці, та інших слів я не знайшов. У рік дев'ятий революції ось тільки трохи про любов. Бо очі зламано у муці, і розпанахано кривавий рота шов. Я на любовному позбиваному луці так змучено і непевнено прийшов. За мало днів ішли ми поруч, за мало сном ми марили одним. Шляхом розірваним своїм, ти йдеш наліво, я праворуч, і встане мрії нестворенний дим над половінням молодим. Завіяно огні чужих незнаних станцій, примружено й пригашено огні. То не розрадна путь лягла моїй коханці, то неминучий шлях лягає і мені. Ми йтимемо вночі, ми маритимемо вранці, і знатимемо ми одні, що захлинемось в лихоманці. І в лихоманковому сні. Мов пил до ніг, маріння ті впадуть, І знаю на путі, як радість більшою, Нестиму тебе зів'ялу і бліду, І так невтомлений пройду, Кохань дорогу не сходиму. Коли серця на коріню розхитано, Що оповім коханці я моїй? З усіх кутків душі позмітано Любови порох золотий. Та не розкривано і не читано Таємний зошит мій і твій, Потворно й складно позаплітано неясного чуття сувій. Але чіпати не посмій, не торкнутий і не розкриваний таємний зошит її і свій. Навіщо зміст той несподіваний тобі і їй? Печальних птиць вечерній перельот накинь на тінь і зникне за полями, і поповзуть смеркові тихі плями мохами теплими закурених полот, болот. Рожевий кетях зор розкинеться над нами, немов солодкий і достиглий плід. Цей непомітний ніжний перехід, що ніч сполучує із втомленими днями. Втомились дні, мов зайвий епізод, забуто всі маленькі міста драми, естраду і панель, мансарду і фокстрот, снагу сухих неповних насолод, я ще раз, снагу сухих неповних насолод, бо ж у часи вечірньої нестями Хіба не квітне нам ще візерунок цнот? Okay, another translation. The infinite road. My words may be tangled and terse. They're the only words I have. Nine years of revolution. Uh, here's just a bit about love. For my eyes have been tortured and broken, and my bloodied mouth torn at the seam. Upon this beaten love field I walked, uncertain and drained. Few were our days walking side by side. Few were the dreams that bound us. We part ways on the mangle road. You go left and I'll go right. And the unformed smoke of dreams will rise over early crops. Unfamiliar stations, lanterns are buried, flickering and dim. An unhappy path lies before my lover. An inevitable road lies before me too. We will walk at night. We will dream in the morning. And we alone will know that we are destined to drown in this fever 
and is feverish dreaming. Dust-like, all these dreams will sift to our feet, and I know along the way, like a joyful load, I'll carry you, wilted and pale and tireless, I'll carry on along that infinite love road. When hearts are shaken to the core, what tale shall I tell my lover? I've, I've swept each corner of my soul clean of love's gold powder. Yet still unread, still unreveal, unrevealed is our secret notebook, mine and yours. It's hideously tangled, confused, our scroll of ambivalence. Only never disturb that untouched, still unopened secret notebook, hers and yours. What use are its startling contents to you and her? The evening flight of grieving birds will cast a shadow, pass beyond the fields. The quiet stains of dusk will crawl across the smoky swampland's tepid moss. A pink bundle of stars will spill on us like fruit, sweet and ripe. This tender and conspicuous passage connects exhausted days with night. Exhausted days, like pointless affairs, these petty city dramas all forgotten, the stage, the striptease, Garrett, Foxtrot. The strength of dry, unfinished pleasures, for in the night's euphoric hours, couldn't our innocence still flower? Thank you. Thank you so much, Bogdan. So now uh, Lev and I are gonna read um, in place of Roman Turovsky, who unfortunately couldn't be here. And um, this is uh, the poem called Mojemu uh, Truhovi, to my friend. Zatoliš vikna i začineš dveri, tvoja pora. Bezvučno bjud se na paperi, suhi iz tereki pera. Bezžalisna, nemilosrdna hra iz srcem i slovom peregoni. I boživilni puls agoni v himernih vyvrtah pera. Tak, poetičný gastronom, ne pomičaješ, jak roste rik, no tuješ v zahvati isterek, u bohi rimy, srdce tuchly žom, i namagaješ se v očče, znajti bezodni v ploskim slovi, i vozveličovat isče ljubov plochenku, i srdce tše, i žitja v sirim pidžakovi. Po rožnih paravulkah tuhy, ti zabludivsia v prismarki bledi. Plivuť na jasni vidno kruhy, na nače kruhy po vodi. I krov po v srce propliva, i ne znekaje synjih gub, sia scholola posmiška kriva. I mi ljubimi, mi besili drug, v ohidni zašmorh samogubca, zavjazujica sam tvi čorni vidno kruh. I gnilo krovi, i mizerni smuto kronja kinec tvojo pera. Koli v šenkah, v koli prostitutok, šukaješ pravdi i dobra. Po rožnih prevulkah tuhi, ti zabludiv se v prismerki bledi. Plivuć na jasni vidno kruhi, na nače kruhi po vodi. So... To my friends, to Vitaly Chernetsky, whom I met years ago, asked for help, whose help I got, whose help we got, here we are. He's still at our helm. To Oksana, to Angelica, to Sean, a writer in his own, whom we found through Roman Tarovsky, to Bogdan, who, the multidisciplinarian, whom I believe we poached from another project, to Amelia, who is in the desert with her family and not here with us now, but in spirit. And to Roman Tarovsky himself, multidisciplinarian as well, who's at work right now watching. And to Mikola Bajan, to my friend. Shut the windows and lock the doors. Now it is your turn. The dry hysterics of the quill convulse on paper in silence. A ruthless, heartless game of chase between the heart and the word and the manic pulse of agonies fill the quill's chimeric twists. So, as a poetic gastronome, you take no notice how the year grows. 
You notate in your hysterical delight the squalid rhymes, the heart's rotten pulp. In fact, you try in vain to find an abyss and a flat word. While glorifying also a mediocre love and a small heart and life contained in a gray tweed jacket. You've gotten lost in pale dusk, in empty alleyways of yearning. The vague horizons float around in a way like ripples on water. And so the blood will float past the heart and this chilled and crooked smile will not come off the blue lips. And my beloved and powerless friend, your black horizon will tie itself into the gruesome noose of suicide. The miserly rancid blooded sorrow will drown your pen's nib when in the tavern surrounded by whores, you sit in search of truth and good You've gotten lost in the pale dusk, in the empty side streets of yearning. The faint horizons float around in a way like ripples on water. And also, I forgot to mention Galina Babak, who was writing her dissertation, whom we, as many do, found online while she was writing her dissertation. She said, I'm doing this all night. We said, we're doing this all day, and here we are. So thank you, everybody. On we go. Thank you, Leah, <laughs> for this very moving um, dedication. Um, so next we have a trio of Ainsley, Ostap, and Makita. Uh, hello, everyone. So our trio will read a sample consisting of two poems. Uh, these poems were written some or appeared some three or four years apart. And as you're going to hear, they are somewhat radically different, but at the same time, they contain these um, modernist features so um, vitally important in or for uh, Bajan's poetry. So this one is called Circus or Tsirk in Ukrainian, and this is from uh, 1924. Skok, eccentric, skok, very covert, seki, tukan, karkom, tru, vikli, kayu, tilki, truk. Smerkovim kakadu, v trik, trak, pridu, bez bruk, atak. Це гра, це трюк, не тік, а так. Вибрик, карабкається вибрик, полин на дах сердець, теліпається душ колібрі далеко десь. Вибрик, тільки вибрик, тільки ляльки кики мор, пікантна весна, мов сир брі, і диктові жмихи зблог. Підтюбцем, Гоп са са, серце лицаря, дзенькоти ляпаса, скоками, шпицами, гикати, окати, це шкіц? Так. В пики голих фей блощицею брика матюк, розкручений очкур галіфе, сальто мортале, трюк, картатим скакуном захрюкаю. На скумлеві шпальти, тільки трюк, тільки сальто, гикавка, капкою, кука, фейерверк, смерк, крапка, як дика мука, далі смерть, гіп, ляк, мук, душ, стек, цвях, всміх, пик, джаз, зойк, спрах, кульш, ніч, блідь, блим. Зик, гіп, сторч, канкан душ, випнутих душ кікапу, смерть, сій сміх на лошачий скуйовджений круп, сонце цяцьки цкуй, вгору втік хвіст, я, цибатий цвіркун сонячної кувиркної гри, зойк, Стій пропелер, махаон дум. Ой, пне 
скрізь пельку, лякливий какаду, душу шкереберть, серце нічичирк. Це цирк, там смерть. It occurs to me, we haven't done this before when reading this poem, but um, at some point, well, obviously it's a, it's a pull to buy the book, but just to show people maybe up close, I don't know if this will work very well, the layout of this poem reflects the inventive reading. It's for those of you familiar with futurist poetry, it, um, it recalls some of the experiments that they were into, um, but even just in the, with bolding the font and spreading the, spreading the lines across the page and stair-step layout, there's a, there's a lot going on visually in the poem. Uh, so I'm gonna read the English, circus. Jump, acrobats, jump, upside down and anyway, to hell with our tights, heels above our heads, any milly billy woo my neck will handle it. I declare it's just a game, just a trick. With a pitch black cockatoo playing trick track, here I come, no pants, just like that. A game, a trick, not a track attack, a prank, a prank a clambering, take the tightrope to the heart's roof, hummingbird of the soul dangling far off, a prank, just a prank, just a raggle taggle dolly, the spring is piquant like brie cheese with a plywood, plywood flatbread of fleas. At a jot trot, hop, ta, ta, heart of a night, clatter of slaps, through jumps, over spires, hiccuping, oh, and eyeing. Is this a sketch? Yes. Into the muzzles of naked fairies, the swearing flings like a bed bug, undid belt of peg top trousers, flip flap, trick. I will grunt like a checkered racer at the crumpled balls of newspaper. Just a trick, just a flip. A hiccup, cuckoos, drop by drop, into a firework, dusk, full stop. Like a painful torment, further death. Hip, fear tormented souls, whips, nails to laughing mugs, jazz, squeal, thirsty thighs, nights, pale, blink, squeak. Hip, headlong, souls can can, a whirlwind of beaked kickapoo souls, so laughter on the horse's disheveled mane. Mock the sun's tchotchkes, the tail takes up off I, a long-legged locust, in this sunny somersaulting game. Squeal, stop propeller, thoughts butterfly. Oh, a timid cockatoo presses an upside down, soul through the throat, hearts silent. This circus, there's death. I will be reading a poem called Elegia Attractionif, Elegy for Circus Attractions. Из чорного стебла баскасів бавашких басів І флейтиме тушня баска на рині голосів Різкий плежок, зухвалий скік, сухий як тріп галоп І флейто чай цих флейт баских над ямами синкоп Крутися світ, крутися цирк, крутися карусель, і гостро верх, і фейерверк злітає над усе, і день у смерк, і ніч у смерк, і серце ніч і чирк, крутись, скажений фейерверк, крутись, скажений цирк. І око юрб проколот на шпагах тисяч ламп, крутись, прокляти колоте, такт, темп, чи довго прокрутишся та тут, невже не впадеш, невже? Кожен вигиб і темпу, і так ти відрукує капельмейстерський жест. Відрукує і занотує стій. На кожну ноту натує карб свій. І пізнаєш уперту математику пароксизмів захвату і журб. Товаришу, друже, братику, в кожного є свій карб. Кожному ноту нажебрано, і інше будь не могло б. І репить між ржавими ребрами серця сухий зухлоб. Серце, крутися, хитайся, хитайся, вигинайся, шкереберть, і з губ акробата китається, струмочком сповзає смерть. Захлинувся ковтками конвульсій, завертівся на блискучій косі, і щепилися в спільному пульсі серця усі. Горло горбом напнеться, фнеться крик, як звиснемо флаг із трапеції чорний людський язик. Скрикне тоненько паніка. 
Тоді на ціляйся й лети в зойки розпачливі, пані козімни їхні голі роти, слизу і сльози виточі, губи в гримаси зміси, розгойдались, мов трупи на ниточках, голоси. From the little black stem of the bass comes the heavy basses sewing, and the fluttery fuss of a flute in the gutter of voices flowing. A quick hop, a daring leap, a gallop as dry as a drum roll, and these flutes trail of despair above the pits of the syncope. Spin world, spin circus, spin o carousel, and a sharp-edged firework flies above it all. Day into dusk and night into dusk, and the heart stays mute. Spin insatiable fireworks, spin insatiable circus, and the eye of the crowd is pierced by the blades of a thousand lights. Spin, you damn circle, to the beat, to the tempo. How long will you keep on spinning? Won't you fall, won't you? Every twist of the tempo of the beat engraved by the conductor's gesture, engraved and noted, stop. Every note, each one has been marked. And you'll come to know the unyielding mathematics, paroxysms of excitement and despair, comrade, friend, brother, everyone has been marked. Everyone scrounged for their note and each got just one destined and the dried out joints of the heart going creaking mid strips that are rusting. Heart, whirl, wobble, wobble and clamber and bend, death slides down in a little stream from the lips of a Chinese acrobat. Choking on gulps of convulsions, spinning on bright shining spit, and clutching a shared pulse of the heart, everyone. The throat will warp into a hump, the scream will halt in place when it hangs like a flag from the trapeze, the black tone of human speech. A lady will shriek out piercingly. Then panic takes aim and flies into the heartbreaking howls, crumpling their naked mouths grind up the spit and tears, Swiss clips into grimaces. They're swinging like corpses on threads, the voices. Thank you. Bravo, thank you so much. Uh, thank you Ainsley, Ostap and Mikita for this very energizing reading. Um, and now we have uh, Svetlana, whom we actually thank for the title uh, to our book because she was the one who came up with the idea of the title. Thank you ever so much. And you know, I must confess that the circus poem is my favorite one. It was such a masterful job of us, uh, well, of Ainsley and Mustap to translate it into English. And because um, death is the last word in the circus. It is indelibly connected with death or with all those somersaults. I am plunging into battle and we are in the midst of uh, the civil war of 1918 and the patriotic, patriotish Dictus, Pisne Bitsa, Trooper's Song. Bitsi vyjeżdżali, i koni i rżali, Strymano w stremmenach stal dzwenyć, A dym terpki u poli, a w poli dym i rżali, I slyna z kinski hub, ne mow kowil na myć. Dibrowoju zagin bitsi pojechał, Pit kołem i klepali koni puć, I lask szabel, i brask it pichow, u tyśi czorny czuć. Nasuwali na loba papachy, kowtali pil micny, solodki duch, i porochom robuci ruki pachnuć, i krowiu zasmerdziw z jalozny każuch. Oś odyn pochylił się, ja znaju, ty marysz, pro dzietej, pro żynku jakuś. Polubiš, polubi tovarišu, barabani sim midnih kul. Bicam ne možna spat na varti, plekat u tomu na lici, čuho što buduć varti, taki bici. Vi mesnike teper za nih, vi mesnike jeste za brati v rosterzanih, zgvaltovanih sester. Berežit, berežit i gordica, najmenjam suvorim tvojim. 
найменням червоногвардійця і прапором бойовим. Коли ворожий почуєш постріл, рушницю й на коня. Подивися на обрій просто, поганяй. Крізь гони, крізь гони, боєць помчить, лічи патрони, ран не лічи. Не питай дороги, хоч трупом ляж, серце востроги розкри патронтаж. Хай вітер у вічі, умри, не стій, на кожній стрічі стрічаєм бій. Команд не ждіте, хто став пристрель, розкрають вітер сотні шабель. І ми дивіччі умерти змогли б за чорний вугіль, за чорний хліб, за чорні натруджені руки. Медведчи умерти змогли. Troopers song. The troopers set off. Their horses were neighing. Soft, steady clanking of stirrup steel. The smoke in the field was bitter and rusty. The horses' lips drooled in spear grass strands. The squadron rode through a forest. The path punched with horses' hooves. The clangor of sabers, the clatter of sheaths, disturbed the black peace of the woods. They pulled their papahas over their brows. They swallowed thick dust, inhaled strong, sweet fumes. The workers' hands smell of gunpowder. Their cowhide coats a reek of blood. One trooper stooped. You're dreaming, I know. Your kids and a woman. Now you must learn different love, though, for seven copper slugs in your revolver. Troopers don't sleep on a vigil. Your face is no place for fatigue. Or else, what kind of a trooper would you be? You are now Avengers. Avengers for your next of kin, for your lacerated brothers, for your sister raped. Hold dear, be proud of your title, the title of the Red Army Guard, a stern, austere vocation, and cherish your battle flag. When you hear the enemy shooting, grab your rifle, mount your horse. Just have a look at the skyline, urge on. Through furrows, through furrows, the trooper is racing. Count your bullets, don't count your wounds. Don't ask for the way, extinguish your selfhood. Spur your heart and tighten your belt. Eyes to the wind, on every encounter, look war in the face. Death's better than sloth. Don't wait for commands. We shoot those who linger. The wind is slashed up by hundreds of swords. We could die twice for black coal for dark bread. We could die once again for those toil. Blackened hands, many times. Thank you so much, Svetlana. Thank you. So all. I, yeah, I believe that um, we are done now with the reading part. Yes. Uh, so uh, also, my big thanks to all the participants in the project for putting so much of your um, emotion and dedication and heart and uh, intellect into that. Bajan is an incredibly uh, challenging and fascinating poet. And today we got but a small taste of the incredibly rich smorgasbord of uh, styles that we see in the evolution of this very young uh, at the time. Uh, he's the youngest of the great Ukrainian poets uh, that emerged in the 1920s uh, as uh, uh, in Vidrojenya, the famous anthology, uh, Yuri Lavrinenko says that this is a great poet who appeared in Ukrainian literature, so to speak, at five minutes before midnight, before the uh, crackdown of the 1930s, and that he managed to uh, go through such a profound and rapid evolution. And we see here what a diversity of styles. And I can assure you the book uh, showcases several other 
styles that are no less exciting, the conversation of the hearts that Oksana Rosenblum mentioned, or Blind Bards, the uh, epic uh, allegorical poem that is a poem about history, but very much with allusion on the creeping up uh, uh, totalitarianism and the ethical choices that face each and every one of us. Uh, I encourage strongly our audience members to think of questions or comments um, of while you have uh, the time. I see uh, that Lev has raised his hand. So Lev, presumably you have a, uh, you would like to ask something? No, I also wanted to mention that we have a prose piece as well. I was gonna mention that we have the Blind Bards, that beast of a poem that's been worked on by its translator roughly 40 years um and we have a prose piece in there the uh, the conversation at the crossroads um which is also a fascinating read and a lot has a lot of uh, innuendo and um overlays absolutely um, a very important a very, it's a very this is a this is just a snippet of people a snippet of personalities a snippet of the book and we thank this snippet for being here and the snippet is now open to questions. Yes, so uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, mention that uh, I'm just forget now if Halina brought it in her introduction, Bajan was also very strongly connected to the uh, burgeoning Ukrainian film industry. He in fact was the editor-in-chief of the highly influential journal Kino that existed until its closure in 1934. So uh, my question, I guess, would be to uh, the co-editors and to Helena is uh, whether you would like to ask uh, to consider the cinematic imagery or is, uh, do you think Bajan's inter interest in fascination in cinema uh, uh, how has it influenced, how has it filtered into his poetry? What do you think? May I? Yeah. So, yes, yes, please. Th thank you for the question. It's a very good question and I didn't uh, mention it. Yes, I think it influenced a lot, um, not only Bajan, but I would say that like the poetics of a lot of authors of the 1920s, but Bajan mostly. But here, you know, it's a question. Uh, his um, uh, montage strategies, for example, typical for um, for a lot of authors of the 1920s and also Shklovsky wrote about it. Uh, montage and Baroque detail are uh, characteristic of the people of our era is like the quote, yeah? Uh, so um, one can say that this uh, strategy uh, is more like deeply rooted in, in Baroque uh, Ukrainian tradition. Uh, one could see that uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, it is more given by uh, by the cinematic effect, yeah. But but still, actually, it's a question to to think about, yeah. Thank you so much. We have a question from uh, Stephen Watts who agreed to uh, ask it live. Uh, so, Stephen, if you could please um, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and turn on your video. There just might be a slight delay. Just give us a second. We're just bringing Stephen on. Stephen, happy to have you. Yeah, please unmute yourself, Stephen. I can see your camera. Thank you. I've unmuted. Thank you. Please go ahead. Well, uh, many thanks for the um, presentation. And uh, um, particularly, I suppose, as a poet, I've found some of the readings uh, uh, very, very moving, especially the circus poem, um, if I can call it that. But my question really was, um, what trajectories you may see um, from Bajan's poetry, both back to other poets, horizontally to his contemporaries and forward to um, some of the poetries that may be being written at the present time? Um, and I suppose I'm thinking of Ukrainian poets, but actually not only Ukrainian poets, because 
at times when I heard some of the um, some of the readings, I was reminded of poems from poets and ways of writing from many parts of the world. Anyway, sorry, that's a rather broad question, but um, I'd love I'd, I'd I'd love to hear your answers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who wants to take a step first? I will be happy to add some comments, but I would like to focus in the book uh, to have the first chance of responding. Uh, probably I can make a brief comment. <laughs> yes, thanks a lot. Thank you for the question. It's a very good question. And actually it was uh, the first uh, step of my uh, thinking about Bajan and uh, um, in, in my intention to, uh, to present um, his poetry to the Western reader, I would say so, yeah. So first I thought about uh, Eliot's poems. Uh, it reminded me, I mean, the, the complexity in, in the sense of the complexity of the uh, language and uh, complexity of metaphor, yeah, because Bajan, it's not, it's not easy to, uh, to, uh, to understand, uh, it's not easy to translate, um, a, and it's not easy to interpret, yeah, because uh, he, he, his uh, lexic is very wide, and his strategies are very diverse. Uh, as for Ukrainian literature, I would say that he had a great influence on uh, a lot of poets. And uh, actually now it's uh, like uh, last 30 years is the time of rethinking of the uh, Ukrainian uh, like past of Ukrainian heritage of 1920s um, and forming like uh, different different strategies. I would say the that uh, almost all the experimentalism um, of the late 1980s. I mean, Bubabu and Andrukovich, yeah, and the circle of Andrukovich and later uh, Jadan. Pardon, <laughs> it's a typical typical overlapping Jadan Bajan, yeah. Uh, of course, they are all under great uh, uh, under great influence of of, uh, of Bajan's poetry. It's for sure. Yeah, to talk about other uh, like wide world um, authors, um, uh, as I named it, uh, I, I would put him in the range of Yet's poetry and uh, Ezra Pound poet poetry. Yeah, because they are crossing in in the sense of uh, experimentalism and uh, uh, different uh, like montage, grotesque, and uh, metaphorical practices. I would add very briefly that yes, uh, especially the early Bajan, the Bajan before the crackdown of 33, 34 and later mm -hmm. has been very uh, profoundly inspirational for younger Ukrainian poets, uh, especially the generation that came of age in the uh, 1990s. And I would spotlight here, uh, not just Serhii Jadan, who was mentioned here, Jadan, actually is more directly linked with the futurist side of things. So the more futurist poem would be a clear linkage to uh, uh, Bajan's poetry. But uh, Andriy Bondar, who perhaps some, for some is better known right now as an essayist and short story writer, who started out as a poet, his early poetry, his, his poetry written in the 90s and 2000s, he's almost inclusively switched yeah, on to prose. He uh, is very strongly influenced by Bajan and is very much in dialogue with the poetics of Bajan of the late 20s, early 30s. We have now have several other questions. Uh, next in, the, oh, I just, um, if yeah. you wanted to comment. Sure, uh, so circus. Um, Interestingly enough, uh, Ainsley Morse is actually a translator predominantly from Russian, and she um, just came up with a book on children's poetry specifically. So she was here, you know, um, there would be all sorts of overlaps. We had a lot of intra, intra interlingual overlaps, all sorts of things going on. I mean, when I saw this, I, I don't know a lot about a lot. I mean, you know, I was seeing the beats. You know, maybe things flow through the tapestry. Maybe there's a DNA of some sort. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I was, you know, I was seeing the beat. You know, literally the text just jump, 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 jump. You know. Um, also, uh, Askol Milichuk, the writer, um, did an introduction for us at a webinar when our book was first put out, and it's in writing. There was a whole tapestry of um, 
allusions to other literature, which we'll be happy to send over. Um, I, can't even, I, I can't even begin to think of all the details. There were a lot, a lot of mentions of all sorts of Western literature. So that's my little addition. Well, thanks a lot for that answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lev. And so uh, next, uh, I will uh, give the floor to William Blacker uh, to ask his question. William, please. If you are here with us. Yes, hello, sorry, I was just turning on my- No mind. worries. Uh, so thank you so much for such an interesting discussion. And I really, really appreciate the, the book as well, which I had a, a chance to read. Um, and my question is about the, the sort of specific challenges of translating this type of poetry. So this kind of avant-garde poetry, futurist poetry, which is a very specific type of language. And, and language is used in a very kind of, it's already been structured in the discussion, I think, you know, in, in this very kind of visceral way. Um, so I wondered if the, some of the translators could speak about that maybe and, and whether there were maybe some kind of um, English language mod models that you looked to uh, as kind of inspiration, maybe contemporaries of, of these poets writing in English. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, translator, so who would like to take a stab on that? Uh, I'll stop. How about you? Do you have thoughts on this, on the choices and challenges of translation? Well, uh, well, <laughs> these films were uh, purely uh, a total challenge. Uh, but I, when I'm reading this uh, circus poem, which I've been reading for the third or for the fourth time, every time I spot something new, and this is one of the these uh, privileges you have when you read a poem and you can think and rethink it. And uh, I like to think about this poem uh, linked to um, other um, occupation Bajan was... Um, uh, part of at that time. More specifically, in addition to literature and, and film, he was also a book designer. And actually, we have one of the one of the covers in the book. So for him, this uh, dialogue with uh, uh, futurism uh, was uh, sort of uh, taking place on different uh, platforms involving literature, poetry, and 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 uh, visual design or art too. Um, Futurist language is about breaking the language. This is how you do it. And uh, that was uh, somehow uh, our intention too, uh, to come up with uh, some um, variants um, that would also represent the original text, but also will add this uh, strangeness which uh, Ukrainian original uh, contains. All right, uh, thanks so much, Ostap. Uh, any other translator would like to um, uh, I can add just, some comment? Yeah, just a quick two, five cents. Uh, I, uh, I started translating it uh, initially. It was uh, I'm, uh, very going, um, it was pretty rough, and it's it's not no, nowhere near to the challenge of the circus, obviously. But uh, still, the, the the broken rhythms, the the imagery, it, it was very difficult to we try trying to keep the rhythm, trying to keep maybe maybe the rhyme, maybe the you know. Uh, so we had to compromise at some point, and then Amelia came and saved saved the translation. <laughs> she helped me to finish it. So that's all. Thank you. Um, so from a managerial producer, I don't play the instruments, but I can evaluate the music and get the musicians together standpoint. Um, we brought people in whose strengths complemented each other because we knew what we were getting people into. We looked at the stuff and we, you know, eyebrows went every which way, you know. Uh, I mean, translation is difficult in itself. You know, there have been a lot of, you know, lost in translation. Translation is impossible. Translation is inevitable. So we asked people who don't translate Ukrainian, don't translate 
write, um, make art, every, every which way. There have been so many collaborate. There's other, there, there's so many levels of collaboration here that helped to create the final product. So yes, it was a multidisciplinary, uh, multilingual thing. Um, I, I'm not even sure what language people spoke into each other, honestly. And I think they're not even sure at a certain point. There were, I don't know, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg probably has a book's worth of conversations about single words on Facebook. You know, just just single terms, little, little, uh, just little, little turns of phrase, uh, debate, you know, would start, you know, writing, rewriting. But that, that quote that Galena just read, um, we were literally translating it on the fly, right before the Zoom in the chat. I believe we had three or four versions and, con and uh, contradictions of words. So it's, it's constant, you know, and um, I think people ultimately embraced the challenge. I mean, they'll speak more to the specific challenges, but we kind of, uh, we created them and we resolved them, I guess. Wonderful. Uh, thanks so much, Lev. And we are running uh, close to the end of our allotted time. So our final question, uh, I will invite Olha Hometa uh, to please ask. Olha, thank you for being here and thank you for your question. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, everybody. It's, uh, it's such an amazing meeting here today. And I'm so glad to see many of you uh, with whom I'm working on Bajan as well. Um, so I, I do work in Bajan uh, and his poetry in the 1930s. And I, um, I am particularly interested in his poetics. And uh, I think this is an excellent chance to learn how you identify the core cool features of, um, of his poetics in the works that you rendered into English. And how, what was your approach? How you managed to render those like formal features, cool formal features into English, staying honest uh, to the, like to the backup, to the uh, lexical, um, well, to the content of, of, the, of the poem of Bajan's text. Thank you. All right, so uh, building on, on the question about the challenges, uh, thinking about the key, what did, as you approached the translation process, what did you see as the key elements of, po of the, the poet's poetics uh, for the particular poem and how did you work on that uh, challenge? Uh, this is actually something that I especially perhaps, oh, Oksana, since you talked about uh, Rosmova Serdets, uh, this is a such a key poem for understanding, uh, you know, Bajan's, you know, what he is about. So perhaps you could say a few words, even though you did not read the poem today, I invite everyone to look that poem in the book. And perhaps you could say a few words about the process, uh, what it was like for you? Um, yeah, it's um, it's a complicated question. Um, it, it was a the process was really quite long, and um, and it went in stages. So um, first, I I I had to read the poem, you know, many many times, <laughs> and then I sort of to get into the context um, and to, to get the language because it's very, um, again, it's very imaginative. It's very, it's very dreamlike almost specifically in this poem. And um, um, I was actually thinking a lot, I think I shared some of it with Angela uh, because she was helping me also with editing the translation. Uh, that I was almost thinking about the psychoanalytical imagery and approach because there were so many dream images um, in this poem. Um, so that was one of the of the challenges to render it into um, Ukrainian that is um, can be understood by the modern reader, but yet it's. Um, it's true to the Ukrainian of 
you know, as it was spoken in, in late 1920s. Uh, so I remember, for example, at one instance, I, I had to use French word because it, it felt more, um, more true to the context because Bajan was um, talking, um, he was using the word Genshina, which is, you know, it's basically is a Russian word, uh, but here it pops up in, in, you know, in Ukrainian text. So I, I, I had to, to borrow from French to sort of convey that, you know, irony of it, perhaps of, of playfulness that he was, um, yeah, so um, it was definitely um, a complex, complex process, yeah. And uh, thank you for bringing that. This is actually something that in invites us for future consideration for Bajan's poetics. Dreamlike language, of course, is a feature of surrealist poetry, and we do not normally talk about surrealist poetry in the case of a Ukrainian or other East Slavic national literatures, but we have to remember that uh, there were very much way, folks who were in dialogue with surrealism. We talk about surrealist poetry in Yugoslavia or Czechoslovakia of the time. Maybe we should start thinking about Bajan as somebody who is, at least to some extent, exploring those connections too. We are unfortunately out of time. I would like to thank everyone, uh, first of all, to uh, Ukrainian Institute London for making it possible, to Olesya Hromechuk, uh, its wonderful director, to Maria Montague, who assisted us behind the scenes, to our audience members, to everyone who asked the questions, and for those of you who unfortunately didn't have the time to uh, ask, but who uh, joined us today, and most importantly to the wonderful team of editors, uh, scholars, and translators who came together uh, to bring this wonderful volume to us. Uh, we shared uh, with uh, the participants the uh, link to uh, the book on the publisher's website. It is available in paperback, which is very reasonably priced. So please consider um, making a more intimate acquaintance with the book. And yes, it is bilingual face to face so that you will be able to see all the craziness and inventiveness on both sides of things. Uh, thank you so much once again. Uh, Olesa, any final words? Yeah, thank you, Vitali, so much. Um, thank you for moderating so wonderfully, as always. And many, many thanks to all of you, this wonderful choir, as Lev uh, refers to, this fantastic team of translators, scholars, um, uh, poets. So that's all from me. Once again, thank you to everybody who joined us today um, as panelists and as attendees. And we really hope to see you again at our events. Have a lovely day, night. Take care.